Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today we are going to add our comments to the admin panel. So right now we have these user comments that I have already posted. However, we don't have a way to see those comments on our admin panel. So we don't have the ability to delete them if someone posts some spam or maybe some inappropriate content and we want to delete that or we want to have some sort of moderation. Uh, we don't have that ability yet. So for today's episode, we are going to add our comments to our admin panel. Now, before we go ahead and do that, guys, Currently, we have a small bug on our post post list or our blog page. So let's go ahead and fix that. So first, let me show you guys what the bug is. And this was reported by you guys. So thank you for reporting that. So let's go ahead and open up our post list. So I'm going to zoom in. So I'm going to open up our post list component, blade component. Basically, uh, over here where we are looping through our all our posts and we are displaying this post item, we forgot to give it a key. Now, if you guys remember, uh, I have a course on Li Liveware, but basically uh, with Liveware 3, whenever you are doing loops, you want to make sure you have a unique key for every loop item. So this we forgot to do that. So if you want to add a key and you're using like a Liveware component as inside your loop, you can just go ahead and do a colon key or just key and that's, that's that will count as wire key here so in this case i'm going to say double colon key and then pass it in the post id okay and this will go ahead and solve the problem of us not having a wire key okay so if this instead of this uh, post item it was maybe like a div so you, you could go ahead and do something like wire key okay so this is also a possible option so this key is how you would do it if you are including a live wire component so that's all we have to do. Now, this still causes another issue, and that's because inside this post item, we also have, let me open up post item. So inside post item, we are also using another key for our like button. And now our like button and our post itself have the exact same key. So what I will do now is I'm going to just go ahead and add a prefix to our like button, just so they're not the same. So I'll just say a like and then, yeah, something like this. Actually, I already have done this. Let me make sure we are consistent. So let's open up our post show page. So I'll just search for it. It's over here. Posts show. So I think I did the like button. Yeah, dash. So let's try to be consistent. Uh, you don't have to use the exact same naming scheme I use here, guys. You could just have it be like. As a matter of fact, I'll just use like. I think it's shorter. So let's go with this. Okay, so like and then the dash, whatever the ID is, okay? It's up to you, you can come up with whatever uh, scheme you like, but I think this is okay for now. So that's it. Uh, this should hopefully fix all the issues you may be facing. Generally, the reason if you don't have wire key and you have multiple pages and you change the page, LiveWire may not update your like button or some other elements on the page, right? So for example, these tags may still be from the previous page's tags, okay? So this could cause some issues for you. Make sure you always add wire key to prevent that problem so let's go ahead and now work on our admin panel okay so first step for you guys is we need to actually create a new resource for our comments so let's go ahead and do that this is going to be very easy we have done it multiple times so let's type in php artisan make filament resource and our resource name is comment so this is going to be the same as our model name right and our model is called comments if you use a different name maybe you use post comment something like that then go ahead and put the appropriate model name, okay? So let's just hit enter. And did I make a typo here? I have resource. Whoops. Yeah, okay. So now that we have done this, let's go ahead and find this comment resource. I will just search for it on VS Code, guys. To save on some time. So this is it. This is our resource. Uh, let's also reload the admin panel. We should now have these comments over here. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to change, guys, is going to be the icon. So let's go ahead and change that. Now for the icons, uh, if you guys remember on filament, we, it is using hero icons. So I'll just Google or just type in hero icons. I already have it saved up. So let's search for something with comment inside of it. There are a couple of options. Uh, I think I like this one the most. So I'll just copy it. chat bubble bottom center. So just copy this. We just need to copy the name. Move over here and then replace everything after this uh, O dash, okay? And now we have updated the icon. Now, this O stands for the type of icon it is, so O is for outline. If you want to use uh, the solid or the mini version, just use the first character here, okay? So if you want solid, just do uh, S, 
And if you want the mini, just do M. And that's all you have to do. So let's go back to original O. I like that version actually more. And uh, let's do a quick reload. And as you can see, guys, the icon has changed to a nice looking comments. All right, so for our form, uh, let me open up our comments migration so we can see what kind of fields we have. So we only have three kind of uh, columns. We have a user ID, we have a post ID, and then we have the comment, okay, the comment itself. So this should be relatively easy to do. So for our user and post, I'm going to use a select. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do a select. Now, guys, for this one, I'm using VS Code Auto Import, but uh, this is the import if you guys want to manually add that. Okay, it's over here. So I'm going to say select, make. Now, inside here, we need to pass it in our column name, right? Now, I'm using for an ID for. It's basically going to be user ID, okay? So it uses the model name, the singular, followed by ID, okay? So I'm just going to pass it in user ID. And since we already have a relationship set up, we can just go ahead and say a relationship user name now in order for this to work guys you do need to make sure you have a defined the relationship on your comment model so let me open up the comment model over here so we, are, we have already done that on the previous episode so i'm not going to be doing it you should already have it as well but i did want to mention this in case you didn't add it okay so since we already have that i just pass in user and then i want to use the name to show on the drop down i will also go ahead and add searchable to it okay as well as make it also run preload. Preload just adds some default values by the, uh, in the form. If you don't add that, it's gonna be empty unless you search for something. So I think it's nice to have the preload. And now that we have this, let's also make it required as well. So let's do that. Okay. So I'll just copy this and I duplicate the exact same thing for post ID as well. So let's do that real quick. It's just gonna be post ID and then this relationship is going to be post. So let's just reload and see uh, if these two are working properly or not. It is telling us post name does not exist. Yeah, that's true. So this should be, uh, we can use the post title over here, okay? So let's reload. Yeah, so we can now see the users and change the user, same as the post as well. Very nice. And then last but not least, we need to set up the comment itself. For this one, I'll just use a simple uh, text input. So let's do that. Let's do text, input, make, a uh, comment and then let's also make this required and i'll I will also make it have a mean length of one and let's also give it a max length of 255 okay all right that's all we have to do for now and for the text input guys this is the import if you have issues importing it just add this at the top okay so let's go back let's do a quick reload uh, i'll just type something in make sure it works it does indeed work now we need to set up the table. So let's go ahead and set up the table. The table is going to be exactly identical to the form. So I'll just basically mirror it, okay? So for this one, I'm just going to use a text column, okay? So let's do text column. Now, if you want to use or display information from a relationship, just type in the relationship name you have defined on your model, which is post, and then use a dot to access some column on that model, on that relationship. So in this case, I can say post uh, title, okay? And then uh, same thing for the user, I can say user dot name, and this will get that comments user and then display their name, right? So let's go back and do a quick reload. Now we get test user as well as a lot of all tutorial, whatever the post, you know, name was. And then let's do another one for the comment itself as well. And I think I will also add the ID. Uh, this is optional, you don't have to add it. I'll just add it here. I think it's nice to have. All right, so now our uh, individual table form and uh, table itself is done. The next step for you guys is we need to go ahead and add the comments under the post itself, okay? So what I would like to see is if I click on this specific, for example, post, I wanna be able to see all the comments at the bottom, okay? So that's what I would like to have. So let's go ahead and also set that up. Now, I do have a separate video on relationships on filament on my youtube channel if you guys are interested you can go check that out but i will walk you guys throughout the process for setting that up today as well so let's go ahead and do that now for this one uh, what we need to do is we need to create what is known as a relationship manager okay so what it does it just gives you a nice ui for viewing and managing relationships 
for a model. So the first step is we need to create the relationship manager. So let's open up the terminal, type in PHP artisan make relation manager. And I think we need to do filament relation manager. And then after that, you can just hit enter and it will give you a uh, kind of a automatic form where it tells you what arguments you need to pass in. Okay. So what is the resource you would like to create this in? So this is basically where you want to show this relation manager. So in this case, we are showing it on our post resource. Okay. So I just type in post resource, hit enter. Next up, what is the relationship? So uh, this is going to be what is the relationship on the resource itself, right? So because I put post resource, I need to look at our post model. All right, let me close all these other tabs. And we need to look at the relationship we have set up for the comments. In this case, it is called comments. Okay, so I'll just put in comments. Next up is what is the title attribute? So this is basically what is shown, what is used to represent the comments. Okay, in this case, we can use a uh, comment itself. We could also use the ID, but I think comment uh, should be okay. And let's hit enter. And that's all you have to do. Okay, now you don't actually have to pass it in like this. We could have gone ahead and done, for example, post uh, resource, and then comments, and then, uh, you know, comment. But you may forget these arguments. So you can always go ahead and use the the interactive mode version. Okay, so that's all we have to do, guys. Now that we have created this relation manager, we can go ahead, take a look at our filament folder. And under our post resource, there should now be a folder of relation manager. Okay, if you look at all the other folders, there isn't actually a relation manager. If you look at the comment categories, they don't have it except for the post, right? Because we just created this relation manager. So let's open it up. And now you should have this comments, relation manager. So this is used to basically display all the comments under the post. So just creating this won't do anything. We also need to register it. So in order to register it, we need to go ahead and open up our post resource, which is where we want to show it. Okay, so let's open up our post resource. Now, all the resources have this, but let me minimize the table and the form. There should be a section called get relations under your post resource. Okay. And over here, we can go ahead and add our relationship manager here. Okay. In this case, I'm going to say uh, comments, relation manager, class. Okay. That's all we have to do. So this will go ahead and uh, register this relationship manager under our post resource. So if I go back and I do a quick reload now, and I scroll all the way down, we now have this nice looking table and it is actually showing all the comments just like this. Okay. So this is basically what the relationship manager does or relation manager. It gave us this nice looking setup over here for us. So now that we have this guys, uh, the table by default, it is showing the comment, right, which is what we passed for the title. However, when we click on edit, it, it is missing the user and the post. And also, uh, you know, we, don't, we are not able to see the author or the user ID as well as the post itself. Okay. So in order to set those things up, we need to actually go ahead and do those inside the comments relation manager. So if you look at the comments relation manager, it has a form section as well as a table section. So it's somewhat similar to the resource files itself. Okay. So it already has the comment. Uh, now we don't need to pass in the post because we are already showing it under a specific post. So filament is smart enough and it knows it belongs to, for example, this Laravel tutorial. So we don't need to go ahead and pass in uh, the post itself, but we do need to pass in the user. So let's go ahead and do that. Now for this one, we can copy it from our comment resource. So we don't have to just, you know, keep uh, typing it again. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this user select from our comment resource and move it into comment relation manager. So these are two, two separate files. And I do need to import select as well. So it is going to be a filament forms component select over here. All right. And that's all we have to do. Now we could have technically done it this way as well. So if you guys are not happy with this, it is a bit inconsistent. Uh, you can go ahead and fix all of these and follow the exact same format, either import it all the time or just have the entire namespace here. Okay. Now for sake of time, I'm not going to be doing it throughout the video, but you know, it is something you can do if you guys would like. So let's go back, let's do reload. I'm going to click on edit. 
and now we should be able to see the user over here okay and if we click on create or new comment again we also have the user over here now we don't need the post id again uh fill image will automatically added under this laravel tutorial post okay so it's smart enough to do that for us and then for the table itself uh, we can go ahead and do user dot name now if you guys would like you can also go ahead and put the post itself I think it's a little bit obvious that this belongs to this Laravel tutorial, so I'm not going to add the post itself, but you can definitely go ahead and do that if that is something you need for your own application. All right, and then last but not least, we can also go ahead and customize the buttons over here. So if you want to add, remove, or you know, change these buttons, you can go ahead and set it up over these actions. I think I like the default version. The only thing I will do is I will delete the bulk actions, okay? I don't like the bulk actions, so I'll just remove those. And everything else... I will actually keep it. same as the new comment as well as edit and delete and i think we are now good to go guys so that's all we have to do for adding these comments over here so let's just test it out i'll try to delete one of the comments so let me open up a lot of a tutorial on this page let's scroll all the way down okay so i'm gonna go ahead and delete this hello youtube comment so let's click on delete confirm it was successfully deleted i'll do a quick reload and yeah, as you can see, it was now deleted. So we have a simple setup for us to moderate and view comments. It's not a very, you know, well-implemented system. It definitely has a lot of limitations, but I think it will do for a simple uh, blog project. And of course, you can, you know, enhance this and add more on top of that or use some sort of third-party setup for these comments. There are many of them that kind of um, make life a bit easier for you, but... I think it's good to know how to implement this on your own if you guys need it. Of course, we could have also added some sort of approval system. So all the comments automatically are kind of unapproved. And then the admin needs to approve them for it to be shown. We could have definitely implemented that system. But I think it's a little bit too much for the scope of this tutorial. So I kind of uh, decided not to do it. But that is something you can definitely add in yourself. And okay, guys, that's it for today's episode. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. And as always, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. And also YouTube uh, tends to show the videos more if it has more likes. So I always appreciate it. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.